Detective Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama thriller film called, 10 by 10. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Lewis quietly sits in a local restaurant, keenly watching Kathy from across the street as she enters her flower shop. A few minutes later, she comes out and goes to the same restaurant Lewis is in to buy some coffee. After the waiter, Dennis, takes her order, Kathy gives him a bouquet for his wife and asks how she's doing, and Dennis says they need to run a few more tests for her. Kathy then offers to help him with his kids, and after Dennis thanks her, Kathy takes her seat. Lewis continues to watch her, and as Kathy eats, Lewis leaves the restaurant. Once Kathy is done, she goes to her car in the parking lot, where Lewis is waiting inside his vehicle. Lewis follows Kathy as she drives to the gym, and when she goes inside, Lewis gets out of his car, too. He then peeks inside her car, and when he gets back to his, he puts a gun on the passenger seat and covers it with newspaper. When Lewis sees Kathy coming out, he follows her to her car and suddenly covers her face with a plastic bag. Kathy tries to break free by headbutting Lewis, and as soon as she removes the plastic cover, she screams for help. Unfortunately, the person nearby is listening to loud music, so he doesn't hear Kathy. Lewis immediately covers her mouth and threatens to kill her if she makes another sound. He then puts duct tape over her mouth and binds her hands and feet with cable ties. Lewis goes back to his car, leaving Kathy to struggle on the ground, while the driver of the vehicle next to Kathy doesn't even notice her as he drives away. Lewis goes back for Kathy and picks her up before putting her inside the trunk of his car. Lewis takes Kathy to his house, where he drags and locks her inside a padded room hidden behind a wall. He leaves her there and pushes the wall back in place, leaving no trace of the secret room. After preparing some food and removing any evidence from his car, Lewis checks on Kathy again. He tells her that she's locked inside a room with padded four-foot thick concrete walls and sound absorbing products. He claims to have put those on the walls himself, reminding her that it will be useless to scream. Lewis then instructs her to tell him her name after he removes her tape. As soon as he does, Kathy starts screaming, but no one hears her. With that, Lewis locks her inside once more then turns off the light. He checks his computer and listens to Kathy as she continues screaming and begging for help before muting it. Meanwhile, Kathy manages to sit down and tries to find a way out of the room by kicking the padded walls to no avail. She then notices the vent on the wall and tries screaming louder, but still, nobody hears her. In the living area, Lewis watches the news as he loads his gun, and when he goes back to check on Kathy again, he tells her that she can keep screaming and see how long it will take before someone hears her. He also tells her that they can just get down to business, and when Lewis walks toward her, Kathy begs him not to touch her. Confused, Lewis only looks at her as she tries to bribe him with her money. Mocking her, Lewis says that's a lot of money for someone in her line of business before telling her directly that he doesn't want it. Lewis then takes out his gun and talks to Kathy about a documentary he's seen on television, but Kathy ignores him and tells him that the cops will find her car, which will lead them to Lewis's house. She then tearfully promises not to say a word about him if he lets her go, but Lewis only orders her to tell him her name. When Kathy says her name is Kathy Nolan, Lewis gets disappointed for some reason and leaves. Back in the living room, Lewis goes through Kathy's belongings. Meanwhile, Kathy painfully manages to bring her bound hands in front, and when Lewis enters the room, she repeatedly hits him in the face and pushes him before she loses her balance. As Kathy tries to crawl away from him, Lewis grabs her by the feet, but she kicks him in the face. Kathy then stands and picks up the vase from the table and smashes it on Lewis's head. She continues to crawl away, and when she reaches the living room and uses the phone to call for help, Lewis shoots it. Petrified, Kathy bows her head and begs Lewis not to kill her, but as soon as he stepped toward her, she knocks him unconscious. Kathy then notices her bag on a chair, and when she gets it and takes out her cell phone, she realizes that it's not receiving any signal. She hops behind the kitchen counter, where she finds a knife in one of the drawers and manages to cut the cable tie binding her feet. With the knife still in her hand, Kathy tries opening the door, but it wouldn't budge. As Kathy bangs on the door and screams for help, Lewis finally regains consciousness and asks her where she thinks she's going. Using the knife to protect herself, Kathy warns Lewis to stay back and asks him how he knows what she does for a living. Lewis replies that she can't make much selling flowers, then asks her to join him at the table so she can tell him the things he wants to know, like her name. When she repeats that her name is Kathy Nolan, Lewis gets upset. He then asks her if they could start again since he just wants to know her a little bit more. Ignoring him, Kathy moves towards him while holding the knife, asking who he is and if there are others aside from her. Unbothered, Lewis retorts that he can easily beat her with his gun before asking her to sit down. When Kathy finally sits, Lewis offers her some food, but she refuses. Lewis tells her that she's smart, and she's probably figured out that if he truly wanted to kill her, he would have done it already. He then reminds her that he's only asked her one question since she got in his house, and when he asks her what his question was, Kathy replies that he's asking for her name. Lewis says they can really start talking when she tells him her name, and for the third time, she tells him that her name is Kathy Noland. Suddenly, Lewis gets furious and throws his plate in Kathy's face. He quickly reaches for his gun and points it at Kathy, who deflects his attack, making him drop his firearm. She then tries attacking him with a knife, but Lewis manages to fend her off before kicking the gun away and tackling her. As they struggle, Kathy drops the knife but bravely bites Lewis's shoulder before putting him in a chokehold. Once Lewis stops moving, Kathy shoves him aside and crawls away, but Lewis once again grabs her by the feet and finally subdues her by slapping her hard. 
As Lewis catches his breath, he picks up his gun and drags Kathy back inside the padded room. Meanwhile, Lewis's helper, Alondra, arrives and gets confused upon seeing the mess in the house. Lewis then informs her that he doesn't need her for the day, and when Alondra notices that he's bleeding, Lewis assures her that he's okay and that she should just leave. Dropping the subject, Alondra says she'll come back the following day with his daughter, Summer, and he agrees. Afterwards, he visits Kathy and offers to fix her up. Once he's done, Lewis takes a shower and tends to his wound, while Kathy takes out her phone, which she secretly hid in her pocket, and checks if it's getting any signal. Unfortunately, her cell phone remains useless, so she just returns it in her pocket. As Lewis eats and watches about the retrial of the Charleston 3, Kathy notices a crack on the tile floor and tries to remove it. With a gun this time, Lewis goes back to the padded room and interrogates Kathy. He asks for her name, birthday, place of birth, school, course, and what she did after graduating. Lewis also asks if she was raised in a church, if she has any siblings, and what her parents' professions were. Kathy answers all of his questions, including the one about her parents, saying her mother was a retired nurse while her father was an organizer for the Detroit Lions. Certain that Kathy is lying, Lewis confesses that he's been watching her for months and that he knows she's just lied about everything she just told him. He then asks her again where she's born, and when she says California, he asks her again. This time, Kathy replies she's born in Orange County, California, which frustrates Lewis even more. He wants her to answer his question again, and when Kathy shouts California, Lewis fires his gun, hitting the wall behind her. He warns her that the next bullet will go in her head, so when he asks her for the last time where she was born, Kathy says in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Lowering his gun, Lewis continues interrogating her, asking her the same questions he's asked before, only this time, he gets different answers. With Kathy finally being honest, Lewis tells her that he knows it broke her heart when her father left home. He also knows that her mother was a nurse, while her father was a team doctor, who left her mother for a cheerleader, which put Kathy's twin sister at the end of a rope. Kathy only remains silent, and when Lewis says she went back to school and made something of herself, Kathy asks him what exactly he's doing. Lewis ignores her and tells her he knows she's lied about her former job and course, so when he asked her again what particular course she took, she replies it's nursing. Now that he's getting what he wants, Lewis demands that she tell him what her name is, and when she says it's Kathy, Lewis says Kathy was the name of her dead sister. With the truth now out in the open, Kathy admits that her name is Natalie Ann Stevens. After Natalie's confession, Lewis muses that she must be wondering why she's there, but he adds that he thinks she already knows before finally leaving. With Natalie now alone in the room, she lets out her frustration and distress and starts screaming, but Lewis pays her no mind. Natalie then tries removing the broken shard on the floor while outside, Lewis watches a video of him with his baby. Natalie's efforts are futile, so she tries using her phone again and raises it high near the vent to get a bar. Finally, she manages to contact the police, while on the other hand, Lewis realizes that Natalie's phone is missing. As Natalie talks to the police on the phone, the weak signal ends the call, so she just hides it again. Lewis then arrives with a gun in hand, demanding her to tell him where her phone is. He then frisks Natalie and breaks the phone with his gun as soon as he takes it. Exasperated, Lewis asks Natalie where she worked as a nurse, and Natalie answers that she worked at All Angels, Charleston. Lewis then questions her how many patients inexplicably died in her care, and when she asks him which one, Lewis says she must mean which one of the Charleston three was his wife. Finally, Lewis asks if she remembers Alana Matthew Lewis, and Natalie could only nod her head. He concludes that it must be the reason she moved away. Three people died unaccountably, and people were, of course, curious. However, Natalie defends herself, claiming all the nurses were acquitted in the trial. Lewis is now demanding to know why she left, so she explains that the trial ruined her career and that she needed a fresh start. Ignoring Natalie's explanation, he says he started doubting everything when he noticed that his wife's wedding ring was missing since she never took it off. He also talks about another patient who mysteriously died of organ failure but had passed his medical insurance a month earlier. Lastly, Lewis asserts that he knows his wife doesn't drink much, but Alana was drunk while her blood was full of GHB, which is a depressant. Maintaining her innocence, Natalie insists that the court found no negligence with the hospital and that she's sorry for Lewis's loss. Lewis asks her if she really is sorry, then informs her that he's holding her captive because he knows she killed his wife, and he wants to know why. Lewis then adds that if he doesn't get a good enough explanation as to why Alana died, then Natalie will die, too. Outside, Lewis listens to Natalie as she cries over the speaker. He then watches another video, this time of his wife and their then four-year-old daughter, making him emotional. Back in the padded room, Natalie's fingers start bleeding while she continues to remove the broken shard from the floor. Lewis then decides to go back to the room and points his gun at Natalie's head, but she begs him not to kill her, promising she'll tell him everything. Natalie confesses that she and her sister were raised in a church and that they learned the ways of the Bible. They were protected by God, but not by her father, who fooled around with her sister's best friend. When her mother confronted her father about his affair, he just packed his bags and left them, while the townsfolk stopped talking to them and acted like they're invisible. When Lewis asks what her story has got to do with his wife, Natalie ignores him and continues telling him that they were good people, but they were being punished for her father's sins. She then says that she found her sister hanging in the barn, adding that she dedicated her life to Kathy and serving other people, including the patients in the hospital who would tell her their horrible secrets. 
The first patient of the Charleston three who died of organ failure had two wives, while the second one was a woman who falsely accused her loving husband of beating her and tried making her wounds look worse to keep shaking him down for divorce money. Finally, Natalie starts talking about Lewis's wife, saying she was cheating on him. This shocks Lewis, but Natalie keeps on speaking, saying that Alana wasn't wearing her wedding ring because she was sleeping with another man. Unable to accept the truth, Lewis tells Natalie to keep quiet, but she continues, saying that Alana was drunk in a hotel bar and not a single ID was found on her when she collapsed. She then asks Lewis if he really believes Alana was at a work meeting, and adds that she saw Alana's other guy secretly visiting her at the hospital. Lewis then gets up as he keeps his gun pointed at Natalie, ordering her to shut up. Unfazed, Natalie says the Bible states that marriage should be held with honor, and his wife was a sinner, a vulgar woman. Lewis demands Natalie not to say another word, but in the end, Natalie finally admits to killing Alana. Back in the living room, Lewis keeps rewinding the video of Alana as she cancels an incoming call, and he realizes that Natalie is telling the truth. He starts breaking stuff around the house before going out for a drive. He goes to a lake where two police officers suddenly show up. They start questioning Lewis, asking what happened to his hand and where he lives. After answering their questions, Lewis asks them if everything's okay, and they tell him that they're just investigating a call since a car matching his was described. Once he is cleared, the officers apologize for troubling him before leaving. Lewis then drives back home, not knowing that Natalie has used her broken cell phone to remove the shard of tile from its place. Upon entering the padded room, he kneels in front of Natalie and asks her what he's supposed to say to Summer when she asks him about her mother. Tearful, he tells her that she has no right to take Alana away from him before they could talk and that she needs to turn herself in. Natalie simply refuses and stabs Lewis with the broken shard of tile before repeatedly kicking him in the gut, telling him that she now lives as Kathy. She then gets on top of Lewis and tells him that she's not going to give up her happy life for him, then punches him in the face before running out the door. On her way out of the house, Natalie searches for Lewis's gun but finds a knife instead. She goes back to the room, only to find it empty, and once inside, Lewis tries closing the door. Unfortunately, Natalie manages to stop him, and left without enough strength, Lewis lets go of the door and goes to the living room to pick up his gun. Natalie quickly catches up to him and kicks his hand, sending the gun flying across the room. The two engage in a physical fight, and Natalie tackles him as he attempts to reach the gun. However, Natalie gets the gun first and points it at him. This is when Summer and Alondra unexpectedly arrive. Natalie shoots Alondra before she could even react and warns Lewis to stay back. Natalie then takes Summer as her hostage and asks Lewis why he had to complicate things. Lewis begs her not to hurt Summer, asserting that she's done nothing wrong, but Natalie dismisses him. With Lewis continuing to beg, Natalie asks him if he believes that Summer is his child. Natalie threatens to kill her, but Lewis informs her that everything she just said has been recorded in his house. Natalie gets distracted and tells him he's lying, while Summer takes advantage of the confusion to bite her hand and elbow her in the stomach before running away. Lewis then jumps Natalie, and as they struggle on the floor, Lewis chokes her until she passes out. When Lewis is about to leave, Natalie immediately regains consciousness, so when she gets up, Lewis shoots her. Lewis then looks for Summer and finds her in the padded room, crying. Before leaving the house, Lewis takes the recording of Natalie's confession, but Summer realizes that Natalie is gone. He then takes his daughter to his car in the garage, where Natalie is waiting for them with the gun. Luckily, the weapon is out of bullets, and the two engage in a fight once more. Lewis throws her over the car's hood, and as he is about to hit her again, Natalie stabs his thigh while Summer runs out of the car. While a very pain Lewis tries to remove the weapon sticking out his thigh, Natalie hits him across the face with a brick. Now that Lewis is on the ground, Natalie takes a pitchfork and attempts to stab him with it, but Lewis manages to stop it in time. With all his might, Lewis pushes it upward and hits Natalie twice in the face, causing her to stumble backward and hit the lock of the garage door. Lewis quickly rolls away from the garage as the door shuts, hitting and trapping Natalie in the middle. Summer then runs toward her father, and he immediately apologizes. While the cops start to arrive, he tells Summer, I love you. You're my child. My child. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.